Section 5-6 is talking about inequalities, again, very similar to Section 5-3, but now we are going to use our inequalities with two triangles. Um, very similar concepts, now we're just including something else. So the first concept we're going to talk about is called the Hinge Theorem, Theorem 513. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, so that's the first thing we have to have. We have to have two triangles, and two sides of those triangles must be congruent for these for the hinge theorem to work. Um, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first is larger than or longer than the third side of the second. So with all of those words, in my first example, I have two sides that are congruent in both of my triangles. So I'm going to look at my included angle, angle A and angle F. So I know that 43 degrees is greater than 30 degrees. So very similar to section 3. I then know that the side opposite of 43 BC is going to be greater than the side opposite of 30, which is GH. And that's the hinge theorem. So the hinge theorem is identifying sides that are used in the inequality. The converse to the hinge theorem is now comparing angle measures. So if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of the other, so again, we're looking at um, congruent sides. First, the first is longer than the third side. Then the included angle measure of the first triangle is greater than the included angle measure of the second. Again, we have two sides of our triangles that are congruent. So since JK's measure is 8, I know 8 is less than PQ, which is 12. So the angle opposite of 8, which is angle L, the measure of angle L is then going to be less than the measure of angle are because of those side lengths. So the converse to the hinge theorem is identifying angles um, in our inequality. All right, let's try a few. All right, the first one, we need to be comparing AD and BD. All right, so remember, first we need congruent sides. So I can say that AC is congruent to BC, and because of the reflexive property, I also have that CD is congruent to CD. So then I can start with, um, this is the hinge theorem, because I'm comparing sides. So 70 degrees is greater than 68 degrees, which then tells us the side across from AD would be greater than, just following that symbol straight down, AD is greater than BD because of their angle measures. All right, let's go to compare our angles. Remember when we were comparing our angles, we're using the converse. The converse hinge. Right, remember, we need congruent sides, so we have AB as congruent to CD. We also have that reflexive property, so now we can start. Um, AD is 5.5, and that's going to be greater than BC, which is 5. So the side opposite AD would be the measure of angle ABD. Following that inequality sign straight down is greater than the angle across from 5, um, the measure of angle B, D, C. All right, go ahead and stop this um, video real quick and uh, do your check your progress. Here are your answers to your check your progress. And we'll keep moving on to the next page. Using the hinge theorem. 
Doctor doctors use straight leg raises, raising tests to determine the amount of pain felt in a person's back. The patient lies flat on the examination table and the doctor raises each leg until the patient experiences pain in the back area. Nitten can tolerate the doctor raising his right leg 35 degrees and his left leg 65 degrees. Which leg can Nitten raise higher above the table? So let's draw our situation. So we have um, our table with our person laying on it. So this is our right leg and I'm not an artist so bear with me. I can raise my right leg off the table 35 degrees and I can raise my left leg from laying on that table. I can raise my left leg 65 degrees, which is a big difference. So it's asking which leg can knit and raise higher above the table. So we're really looking at this length right here. All right, so because 65 degrees on the left leg is greater than 35 degrees on the right leg, they're using the same their legs, which are the same leg lengths, and the table length will also be the same. So that's where we get our two congruent sides. That's why we can then start that hinge theorem. Because we have two congruent sides, we know that our left leg, which is raised 65 degrees, dropping that inequality sign will be greater than our right leg. So our final answer is that our left leg is higher. All right, go ahead and stop the video. Try an example of two people flying a kite. Make sure you draw a picture. That always makes it easier. Here is your answer. And last one. All right, find the range of possible values for A. So when we talk about range and inequalities, it's going to go from one number to the other number. Um, there might not just be one specific answer. So how do we do that? Well, we first need to know how to use our hinge theorems and our converse. So we're looking at, um, we know that 18 is greater than 16. And I keep forgetting to remind us that we have those two sets of congruent sides, which allows us to start um, our hinge theorem or our converse. So because I have sides that are one's greater than the other, I also know that the angle, to set up my inequality, the measure of angle LDM is going to be greater than the measure of angle um, in dm. So I'm then going to substitute my values for those angle measures. 141 will be greater than 9a plus 15. So we're going to solve. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. 126 is greater than 9a, divide both sides by 9, so a is going to be, 14 is going to be greater than 9, I can also rewrite that as a will be less than 14. Alright, well what if we plug in that 14 here, and we know that an angle measure cannot go cannot go below zero. So that's where the range comes in. We have to have a cutoff point somewhere. So I'm also going to plug in 
9a plus 15 must be greater than 0. Because if it's not greater than 0, then it's not a, an angle. So I have to do both of these things to get my final answer. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. 9a is greater than negative 15, dividing both sides by 9. So a must be greater than negative 15 ninths for our angle to be greater than 0. So the range, how do we write that? We're going to take both of our answers here, and we're going to say, and I can actually simplify this, I'm sorry, simplifying it to be negative 5 thirds. So I'm going to take both of my answers, and I'm going to say the smallest answer, negative 5 thirds, must be, A must be less than that, but greater a must be greater than 5 thirds, but less than 14. So I'm actually taking both of these answers and putting them into a range statement. All right, so try your last checkpoint. Don't forget to do both the hinge theorem and make sure your angle doesn't go less than 0. Here is your answer with your range. That's it for the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem, and we'll see you next time.